another great day here in Lawrence County. We seem to be on a roll this week. Jobs announced. New construction here at Fairview Park Hospital today. We have just broke ground on this addition to the emergency room here at Fairview Park to serve their patients better. extremely excited that this project is moving along so rapidly and that we're about to begin construction on this expansion. So thank you for coming and sharing in this exciting time with us. I'd like to just recognize a few folks. Uh, we always like to recognize the elected officials uh, who are representing us in, in Washington or Atlanta or here locally. Uh, Bill Stembridge is representing uh, Senator Saxby Chambliss. Bill, thank you for coming. Uh, I appreciate that. I hate seeing Saxby leave at the end of this year, but uh, I appreciate uh, your representation of him. Uh, of course, our mayor, Phil Best, is here, and uh, he'll be making remarks later. And Tommy Daniels, I know you're here. Where's Tommy? Oh, right here in front of me. Uh, thank you for being here and representing the county. I appreciate that very much. Um, and, and uh, of course, Roger Folsom's on our board locally, and, and uh, Johnny uh, is here. And, and then you can hear from Dr. Lane in a minute, too. But... Uh, um, I appreciate you all serving on our board. Oh, and, and sorry, Willie, I'm so sorry. Willie serves on our board. She, this is the second time in a week she was going to really give me grief. So um, I appreciate the service we have uh, from, from that leadership. The emergency department, um, and, and I, I, I would apologize, with apologies to those of you who work in other departments, uh, can easily be seen as the most important department of the hospital. Seventy percent of our inpatient admissions come through the emergency department. We see nearly 40,000 patients in the ER, which means over 100,000 people come through there every year because nobody comes to the ER alone. And so the emergency department is the front door of the hospital. Uh, it is long needed uh, an expansion and a renovation, uh, and, and that's going to happen. Uh, I, I, I told Tom this morning, I said, hey, let's get your guys here and get started uh, as soon as possible. Um, and. Uh, it's going to be a long process. It'll probably be eight to or 10 to 12 months to have that done. We're going to have to keep seeing patients during that time. But what makes our ER as good as it is, and there's a ton of data that would tell you it's good, and a lot of patients that would tell you it's good, it's not the building. It's the people that work there. Um, it's the doctors, the, the nurses, the techs, the transporters, the, the, the lab techs that go in there, the radiologists. It's everybody that works back there that makes that emergency department what it is and I've been doing this for nearly 30 years and uh, I've never worked with a finer group of folks and, and uh, I hope I never have to use our ER again I actually have used it but I would certainly not hesitate to use it um, I'm excited that we're finally going to be able to expand this I'm glad that we're doing this uh, Dublin construction is is going to be doing the the heavy intensive work all the hard work's already been done right Trey Trey Wood the WMA architects um, has done a ton of work. Tracy said it's gone fast, and maybe today it seems like that, but we've been working on this for many, many months. And, and I say we very generously, I, I really mean a team of people that largely did not include me, uh, did that work. That's, we got such a good group of folks here that have worked with Trey, and um, from ER folks to our our uh, uh, my chief operating officer uh, that's really plural because mario started and now matt has really done the heavy lift and matt's been a, a great addition to this team and has really led this project well you're going to see a wonderful new emergency department you're going to see a dedicated area for our pediatrics um, which we largely have needed uh, 25 percent of the people that come to our er believe it or not are pediatric patients and we'll have an area that's dedicated for them and, and meets their special needs uh, we'll have an area dedicated um, for people have uh, uh, psychiatric needs, and we have some special rooms for, for those patients, for our, our trauma patients, for cardiac patients. And, and we're going to go from 12 rooms to 22 private rooms with all the full service. So uh, we're going to really be uh, uh, an emergency department that far exceeds what we are today and is better able to meet the needs of this region, not just Dublin, not just Lawrence County, but, but uh, all of middle Georgia. We're going to be able to do that uh, even better than we do today. I thank you for being here, for being a part of this. Um, 
uh, on your, there's some, some special remarks that will be made. I'll, I'll introduce uh, Tommy and Phil, and then we'll do the, uh, the ceremonial deal over here. I was really concerned. I thought that the groundbreaking ceremony should be around the corner over here. The emergency department's not here. Uh, that's my office, and which may be actually the emergency department. But, but the reality is I wanted the emergency, uh, the, the groundbreaking, to be me on a backhoe digging into the ground, and they wouldn't let me do that. So this will be our groundbreaking ceremony. This is, this is a fine day for Lawrence County and Dublin and surrounding area again. So, uh, And we need to, uh, on behalf of Lawrence County and Lawrence County Board of Commissioners, I'm happy to represent the people of our whole community uh, at this ground is important groundbreaking. And I, I, I just see that uh, Dublin Construction has this job also with uh, Trey Wood, the architect. Uh, we want to recognize everyone involved, uh, Mr. Hall, Tom, and Ben, a lifetime friends of mine. And, I'll, and they are supportive of everybody in the county. And every, I think everybody, it's advantageous to everyone involved of this ceremony today. And I wish everyone, I wish Dublin and Lawrence County the best and the surrounding areas. Thank you all. When we have one of our existing industries, and this is certainly an industry, to expand and to do good, that, that's good for all of us. You know, we besides the health care needs that Fairview provides, the economic impact and the employees that they have and the and the retail trade that they produce is a is a huge deal to us and it's, we're glad to have y'all here, Don, and and your staff. And we hope y'all do good with this. Congratulations to Tom and Ben and Dublin Construction Company. I know the job will be good and and Thank them for employing the folks they do, too. <laughs> okay, Matt, what a great day here at Fairview. We've just heard Don Avery talking about it, some of the guys, but uh, this has been a long time coming, hasn't it? It sure has. Uh, while I've only been here six months, this has been a long time coming over the last two to three years. We've, uh, we've actually uh, increased our uh, capacity, our volume of the number of folks we've brought in over the last two to three years, almost 10,000 people in addition. And so expanding our uh, uh, ability to service them uh, is, a, is a much needed thing for our community. Okay, you already got your wait times down. You can go on your mobile phone and let you know you're coming. I mean, you've made, you really made it easy to come to the hospital. Back in the old days, I mean, it was really hard <laughs> to get in a hospital. Yeah. So you've kind of sped things up there. So uh, adding the extra beds, you'll get up to how many beds now? Uh, we'll be at 22 full-service mm -hmm. beds. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would actually uh, make sure we have all the different med gases and, and uh, standards in there for a private room. Okay. And we can't stress enough now, this is not going to interfere with us coming and needing the emergency room. Absolutely not. Um, we have phased this in a way that it will limit the interruptions. We will continue to be open 24-7. Um, obviously, there may be some pounding from time to time, but uh, we will try to mitigate that as much as possible, uh, working in times where it's not as busy. Um, so there's no uh, no threat there, no worry. We'll be able to operate uh, going forward and be able to service our folks in the community. Okay, so here's the thing. You got to start college. Now, here's a smart, affordable place to do it. OFTC, Oconee Fault Line Technical College. Yeah, man, it's great. Day classes, night classes, online classes, and dual enrollment. They're all offered. So whether you're still in school or looking to start a new career, it's not hard to fit college, the OFTC way, into your life. So if you want to get your hands on a career with a future, OFTC is the place to do it. So, are you ready to start your college? Okay, we're here at Dublin High School. Can you tell, John, the excitement in the air? There's not students in here. These are educators. <laughs> I'm a new school year. Uh, teachers excited to be back. Uh, good times by all. We're looking forward to a great school year. Uh, this is a day we kind of get together and, and uh, touch on a few of the... Um, 
ex excitements from last year or successes and uh, look on how we're going to build on those successes each year. So Dr. Ledbetter is doing a great job getting everybody going. And uh, then we'll dismiss about lunch and we'll be back to our uh, schools. And I'm kind of looking forward to getting everybody back in the building so uh, we can make a plan to get to work. And uh, I'm excited about what's going on. Is it we're getting older that it goes by quicker? Because it seemed like when I was younger, it didn't go by like it does now. Well, this year, you know, for the, us principals, we, we're pretty much there throughout the summer, but you're wondering where the time has gone because I, I feel like I've scrambled this last week to get ready to have the teachers in, and then we've got the kids coming really tomorrow for open house, and then they'll be here Thursday, and, I mean, it really has. But now we did come back to school a couple of weeks earlier than, than past, so it, it shortened it down a little bit, but... The years are starting to, to pile up on me. Okay, for people new to our area, tell us about Saxon. Saxon Heights is a school that's been around for over 100 years. Uh, we're, uh, we're the art school with the, the theme schools uh, for the elementary. Uh, we're called Saxon Heights Talented Arts and Gifted Elementary School, and we integrate the arts into the curriculum. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to try to teach the Georgia Performance Standards, Common Core, teach all those standards, by using the arts to engage the students by, you know, we're going to build on their creativity to get them to understand and engage them in learning. That's got to be fun, John. I mean, combine it with arts. Oh, I mean, it's things that, uh, when we organize this, the teachers have been doing it a long time, but it was more organized, and now we're using it in different ways. But the students love it. And I mean, you know, it may be, it may be that we're making a, a song to remember something, and our kids will turn it into a, uh, a dance or a drama, and then we may take to, to build, uh, you know, to do some geometry work. We might take marshmallows and toothpicks to build prisms. I mean, you know, so, and, and the kids get excited about stuff like that. And, of course, this day and time, if you don't make it fun, a lot of kids you're not going to reach, are you? Well, it's like Dr. Lindbergh was talking about. A lot of kids make a decision to want to quit at a young age. And so right now, especially the elementary level, that's one of the reasons for the theme schools is we're trying to find ways to keep students engaged, keep them excited about learning. And, you know, so they will hopefully it stays with them as they get to middle school and they get to high school and they want to get that graduate and get that degree because, you know, we look past that now. We look to see what kids are doing five years from now. And uh, for us to be successful, we want our students that we've had many years ago, five years from now, being successful in our, in our city, in our towns, all over the state. Okay, you former coach, you've coached for many years. How important is it, and how much do you encourage kids to get in athletics? Oh, I, I think athletics is the key. I, I think it's so important to have something else to be involved in. Uh, there's so many life lessons from athletics. Uh, you know, I, I can't say enough about all the students that I've had that come through. Now, I'm having a lot of players and, and former students, children come through, and even grandchildren come through, and uh, just to uh, hear a story or two that uh, their parents told them about something they learned from us or, or down the way. And I, I was recently challenged, you know, on, on what they call the book, you know, on Facebook about positive things. And I think about all the different things that I've learned from different people, especially in education. Uh, we learn something every day from somebody new, and, and you've got to take all those in, and that's going to develop us into what we are today. Okay, next I have with me Dr. Williams with Susie Dasher. Now, how many years have you been at Susie Dasher? This is my second year at Susie okay. Dasher. I came in last year as a first-time principal. Uh, prior to that, I was assistant principal at Dublin High School for two years. So, silently speaking, going into my second year as a principal at Susie Dasher. Okay, what's the difference in being a principal and being an assistant principal? <laughs> oh, it's a big difference. <laughs> um, you know, as an assistant principal, uh, you basically, you know, help serve your principal, your building principal. And a lot of the responsibilities and tasks that a principal uh, is responsible for, you know, very rarely does that trickle down to the assistant principal. You know, maintaining the budget, understanding FTE count, understanding, uh, you know, various forms of curriculum and how it plays into the overall picture. And as an assistant principal, sometimes you're just supporting the principal as he's taking on those uh, responsibilities. So as a principal, when I've come on, uh, I've had to take on some of those responsibilities. Sometimes, you know, not knowing, but being able to call Robert or call John Strickland, those guys who have been in it for a good bit, and, uh, and you grow with it. You know, uh, just like educators, as a principal, you grow. And uh, I'm a much better principal uh, today than I was this time last year. And I assume to be a much better this time next year, a uh, much better principal. Yeah, no doubt. 
Well, Susie Dasher, I, if I was going to be an educator, I'd want to be in a school with that age kids. That's got <laughs> to be fun, don't it? It is. I spent uh, the first 14 years of my uh, educational career dealing with high school, middle school kids and, uh, and was terrified of elementary kids uh, merely because, you know, uh, my wife, who's also an elementary school teacher, I visit her class a number of times, and it seems like every time I've gone to the classroom, you know, the kids were just so needy. They were always moving. You got one crying. You got one who wants mom. And I'm sitting here like, oh, I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be able to handle that. But as I got into the school, and it's so different, you know, uh, as I come in as a, uh, uh, a principal, a lot of the kids see and respect me as a father figure. And so, uh, so it, it's a kind of, it's a natural progression. Uh, they still respect you the same. They still look up to you. And, uh, and they're not as bad as I thought they were. That was just my wife's class. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually the case. Isn't it? Okay, for people new to our area, tell us about Susie Dasher. Well, Susie Dasher, I'll tell you what, if you walk into Susie Dasher today, you'll see uh, we uh, had an internal change. We've uh, done some things inside to, to, to make us look better. Uh, we are a STEM school. We focus on science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, have a great set of teachers who are, who are very innovative. Uh, who focus on the initiative of the kids. But if you come over to Susan Dasher, you'll see a great loving family of teachers and staff, uh, great community support, great parental support, um, who, and, and these individuals ultimately help us with our charge and with our aims. So uh, anyone who's, who's coming into Dublin and looking for a great elementary school, which we, we have a great number of elementary schools, but if you have a child or a son or a daughter who's interested in technology, uh, who's interested in uh, various uh, forms of uh, academia such as science and uh, math, you know, I would encourage them to come. Uh, now, my wife, who works over at Ta uh, Saxon uh, Heights, the tag school, and she's a gifted arts person. So oftentimes, we sit at home late at night, basically battling for students, because she wants those gifted ones, and I want those technology ones. So <laughs> sometimes, we almost have to compromise. But nevertheless, at the end of the day, we have three great elementary schools that focus on the, uh, the themes at hand. And, um, you know, and we all do a great job. But like I said, if I have someone who's coming to want to uh, experience and, and, and explore Susan Dasher, I would definitely tell them to come up there looking for that uh, rich technology-based science, uh, science, technology, engineering, math curriculum that we offer. And no matter where they go, the kid wins, don't they? The kid ultimately wins. The kid ultimately wins. And, uh, and uh, you know, Dr. Ledbetter made some good points early in his presentation uh, that 95% uh, of our children, since we've had our charter theme, have stayed at their respective schools and with only 5% turnover. So, once again, like he echoed, uh, we're doing something good and the parents are satisfied, the kids are satisfied, and, of course, the academic achievement shows across the board through our elementary schools. Okay, I have with me Emory Bostic at Moore Street. Are you ready for school? Oh, I'm so so excited. I don't know what to do. This is a great time of the year that I really look forward to starting a new year. And I know that by starting a new year, we can look towards the end of completing another year. That's a long way to look. Yeah. But uh, I'm very excited about the possibilities and the things that we're doing in Dublin school system just for the children alone. And so I'm so excited. You know, you got the IB program coming on, you got the Career Academy coming on, and you just got so many things that are coming that just often parents a multitude of decisions that they have to make just being in a charter system itself, yep. giving parents the choice Amen. of where they want, and that's powerful. Yeah, and I told Dr. Williams, no matter where that parent chooses what school, the student will ultimately win either way. Either way, yes, yes. So I'm just so excited. And, you know, even when you look at all the way from uh, pre-K up to the high school, the many things that are going on within the system, I'm just excited about it. Yes. Uh, now, Dr. Um, uh, Ledbetter mentioned a few years ago that if principals don't do their job during the summer, school just don't go right. That's right. Is that true? That's absolutely, that's a fact. And, uh, you know, it, it, it feels as a principal, I really haven't taken a break because I've been doing a little here, a little there, and then you had the summer school that you had to go through. So sometimes as a principal, I don't feel like I really had a great break this summer. But that's okay. I'm on the back end of my career anyway. <laughs> Tell us what's going on at Moore Street this year. Well, actually, uh, we've uh, decided that, uh, as most folks know, that there are some important things to be successful in school. And at Moore Street School, we have to understand those things that are important for the success of school. And the first thing is that you got to be a relationship. Relationships are very important. 
So that's one of the first thing that we try to do with our staff over there is build relationship. But one of the other things that's more important, even being in an attorney to school, is to make sure our standards are the same as what the state are expecting us to do. So this year we've had the opportunity to rethink our curriculum, and so we're looking forward to working with two computer-based programs that we have not used in the past, particularly Apex Learning for the high school and Odyssey Web for the middle. And hopefully by the end of the year we would decide which one of those programs fit the things that we're trying to do at Moore Street School. And, of course, before you can indoctrinate the kids, y'all have to learn those Oh, systems, yes. Right? <laughs> and, and, and it has come at a price. Yeah. And a sacrifice with the <laughs> teachers. You know, my teachers have been back three days already off payroll. <laughs> and so I feel honored to know that they are, they are willing to come what they need to do to get the job done. And that's, that's great staff. And uh, I'm real proud of the staff that we have at Moore Street School. Oconee EMC is offering a fast, easy, and convenient way to pay your utility bill. We now have PaySite kiosks available at five new locations. You walk up, touch here to begin. All you have to do is follow the instructions step by step. Use your agreement that's just saying that you accept the terms of paying your bill, Oconee EMC. Please enter your account number and touch enter. You will need to know your account number for this. And we're using uh, an employee's account number just for demonstration enter your last name and touch enter it's very very simple uh, it really all you have to do is follow the instructions step by step enter your telephone number with area code and the last four numbers of your social security number if you do not have a social security number you can please enter the month and date of your birthday it's all sound activated all you have to do is follow the instructions if you don't want to enter your social security number you can enter your birthday or 9999 that's not anything that we'll have to have you can enter please select a payment type you can do cash, check, debit, credit card. Um, cash, you'll just enter or slide your cash through the insert cash here. It's so easy, but we will not be able to give change. If you need change, you'll need to go into um, the building and see one of our customer service representatives. We're able to take debit card or credit card. Ca uh, check, if you want to pay by check. Enter your check with the routing numbers at the far right. It will scan the check. You won't have to fill it out. And then you'll just enter on the touch screen the amount that you want to pay. If you want to pay by money order, we will not accept money orders at the kiosk, but you're more than welcome to go inside and speak with a customer service representative. They'll be more than happy to accept that money order, or you can put it in our payment drop box. Um, and then you'll just keep following the instructions all the way through. They'll print you out a receipt with your um, where you paid, Oconee EMC. If you paid by cash, check, or debit or credit card, the account number, and how much you paid. They'll also give you a transaction ID number. So in case you need to, to come back in here and prove your payment or wh whatever your case may be, this will allow you to do so. This is the easiest path. We um, have done away with our drive-through with the pavement kiosk. We also have five additional kiosks around our service territory for seven counties. So um, call us at the office if you need more information. Oconee EMC, always looking for ways to serve you, our members, more effectively. Okay, next I have with me Demi McManus, the principal at Hillcrest Elementary. And what year is this at Hillcrest? Um, this will be our fourth year. Fourth year. Mm hmm Okay. Mm -hmm. And tell, for people maybe new to the area, tell us about Hillcrest. Okay, Hillcrest is one of the um, three elementary charter schools. We are the LEAP School, which stands for Leadership, Environmental Awareness, and Public Service. And what we do is try to help students um, bring out the leadership qualities that they have and work with us um, to serve our community through community projects, recycling. Um, we enter different competitions with recycling to help um, spread the word about what it is that we need to do to protect our environment and our community. And also we do um, the Seven Habits of Happy Kids, which mm -hmm. teaches students to, to make the right choices, to think through things and to make sure that they're doing what they need to do to be successful in school. Do you think it's sinking in now? And of course, uh, Hillcrest does a fabulous job as far as recycling. Is mm -hmm. it sinking into the kids yet? 
I think so. I really do. Um, we'll see them. I'll go out on the playground, and, and we'll see kids. They'll come up to me, and they'll say, Miss McManus, we're picking up trash. You know, we're taking care of our school. And so I think that, that they do realize that what they do makes a difference and that, you know, they're part of this community, and it's their responsibility, and we hold them accountable for that. And I think that that makes a huge difference with our students. And it is so important. Of course, we're in the middle of recycling in the city of Dublin, mm -hmm. so there's so many uh, it's so important, and I think our generation, looking back, people seem to just throw trash everywhere. Yeah, they uh, do. They and, do. And it is so important, especially for uh, small kids, to learn that it's our environment. We have to take care of it, don't we? It, it is very important, and I feel like um, by us being able to do the things that we do and participate in the different recycling projects that we participate in, we take a group out to... Um, for the uh, Rivers Alive with mm -hmm. Dublin, La Keep Dublin Lawrence Beautiful, Beautiful. Mm -hmm. we, um, we send a group out and, and we go up and down the river. And so it's not just at our school that we do this. We try to instill it within them throughout the community, whether it be in their neighborhood or whether it be something like a Rivers Alive project or whatever. We want to make sure that what they're learning, they take with them and they apply it wherever they go. Okay, what should parents know about the beginning of school? Well, one thing that we're starting at Hillcrest, there were 10 schools picked in the state of Georgia to pilot academic parent-teacher teams. And that is an opportunity for the schools and the parents to work together to not just support the school by being there, but to actually take an active part in their students' education. And this year what we're doing is we'll be doing three APTT meetings and then individual conferences. And what we'll do in the um, meetings is the teach the Parents will actually go into the teacher's classroom, and each grade level will have a foundational skill that they will teach the parents, and the parents will create all the resources that they need to be able to go home and then help their child with that foundational skill mm. that then will be able to apply to other skills and help them continue to move forward. And they'll do that each of the three meetings that we have. So we're really excited about that opportunity because we know if parents take an active part in their child's education, Amen. the child will be successful. Oh, and yeah. so we were, we were thrilled with, with the opportunity to be part of this pilot with. Um, and our first meeting is September 16th. It starts at 530, and we want all of our parents to come. It's very, very important for them to be um, involved in this process as we go through the pilot. Okay, next I have with me Mr. Millette, your second year at Dublin Middle School, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. Okay, and I know everybody's excited about school starting about. Parents watching us right now, tell us about Dublin Middle School. We're ready for it. We, um, one of the couple of the programs we got this year is, um, one of the main ones we've got is um, the Microsoft certification. Mm -hmm. I think Dr. Ledbetter talked a little bit about just this while ago, where, um, you know, the kids can actually go in and get, you know, industry certification mm -hmm. in um, Word, PowerPoint, 2013. So they'll be ready for that. And, you know, it'll follow them all the way through. Once they graduate, they've still got that certification. So Okay. And let's talk to the parents just a minute. What should they expect? What do we need to do to get our kids ready for Dublin Middle School? This year what we're going to do is we're going to have um, a little more routine in the hallways. We're going to um, a bell schedule. It's going to hold them to five minutes, you know, transition times from the gym into the classrooms and everything. So that's pr probably going to be one of the biggest things. Now, there's been some changes and everything. You know, we had to, we lost some staff and everything, so we've had to do some restructuring with that and everything. But, yeah, probably the, um, the bail schedule and everything with that. So a little, little more routine in the hallways and everything. Well, so. that's good. That's yes. definitely good. Now, middle school is when kids start thinking about athletics and extracurricular right. activities. How important is that to a child's development? Very, very important. And we've got, you know, some coaches over there that work with them. The football team does excellent and everything. Baseball team's growing, mm -hmm. getting there and everything. But, yes, sir, you know, it's wonderful to watch them while, you know, they're still doing the academics and they can still do that. And that's going to do it for our newscast today. Thank you for joining us. And we hope you'll join us again tomorrow right here on Newswatch 35.